here I was actually stopped by an employee and he was asking me what I was filming for and he didn't sound as happy as like the guys at Apple Park. Oh shit. I felt like he was going to kick me out. I cannot wait to share my Apple Park experience with you. And there's other Apple sites I visited in Silicon Valley too. So let's get going. Nothing will get in the way. I feel good about this. This is a load of bullshit. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Really? That's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too because California is beautiful. It was an amazing time and boy, do I have stuff to share with you. I'll talk about the Apple Park Visitor Center, the campus at One Infinite Loop, the old Apple House and Garage, that was really cool to see, the Flint Center, where the Macintosh was first demoed publicly, and my very fun race against the clock back to the airport all the way from Cupertino. Yeah, my flight left in like a couple hours and I didn't have a car and I was 70 miles away from the airport, so that was a lot of fun. Just a little bit of a preface before I get into all the good Apple experiences. So I stayed at this motel by the airport and that was a very fun. It was a very cold and snowy day. This is just how much it snowed just during the drive over. Oh, free Red Bull can. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it was kind of a junky place, but you know, for the cheap price, not a huge deal. I'm in my motel with my amazing retro boomerang tables. Let's see our options. We have a popcorn option, baked potato, and vegetable. Just the one. The bad part was the flight delay. So we're all on the plane for a couple of extra hours because the plane froze up. It had to be de-iced. And then one of the engines would not ignite. And while they tried to fix that and go over all the paperwork for that, the plane froze up again. So it had to be de-iced a second time. Then the runway got shut down because there was too much snow on it. So we take off hours later. So that kind of Fs up my plans a little bit because I wanted to go to Cupertino on that day, but now I knew with this delay, by the time I touched down, the sunlight was just gonna be totally gone by the time I started visiting the sites. This was the fun part though. There was a person sitting next to me who wanted to switch seats on the airplane. They did, and then I ended up sitting next to this other gentleman named Josh, who was an Apple employee of all things. I'm just like, wow. Like, it felt like destiny or some crap. That was a lot of fun. He was a really fun guy to talk to. That, that made the time go by, talking with another Apple employee. So ultimately, I arrived late, had to reschedule the Cupertino visit, but no big deal. The main reason I was in California was actually to film vintage Apple Vault. I found a prototype collector named Hap, and he had this awesome collection of Macs and other Apple products that you probably never even knew existed. So I'll be showing more of that on my other show, Vintage Apple Vault, very soon. Moving right along, I'm in this location doing this filming, right? And I want to go to Cupertino. It's like an hour and 15 minute drive away. I don't have a car. I couldn't rent a car. I find an Uber driver. Boom. First try, I found a guy that was willing to take me all the way to Cupertino in one trip. Kind of a long trip, but I knew it would be worth it. I actually stared out the window like 90% of the time because it's only the second time I've been to California and I've never been to that part of California before. But then the Uber driver pulls up to this house and I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, oh, is it this one or is it the next one? And I'm like, I'm so confused, man. I'm looking for a business address. I'm not looking for a residence. So I'm a tad confused and he's pointing to the GPS and all that. And I'm like, I don't know where exactly I am. And then I look forward through the windshield and I see this huge building. These like really long panels of glass and this giant structure. And I'm like, shit. That's gotta be the ring building. This has to be Apple Park, like right across the street. We drive forward for like another block, boom. Right on the right side, I see the visitor center. I'm like, oh yep, this is the place, you're good. Hop out, here's your tip, <laughs> everything's good. So now I'm standing in this beautiful olive grove with this beautiful building right in front of me. And the sign was pretty cool too, it was nice and big. And there was so much glass. Like it looked like that carbon fiber roof was just floating. As part of Apple's new architecture design, you see a lot of their stores going toward that direction. There's just like this one like stone core wall sort of thing that holds it all up. And there's like these terrazzo floors, kind of marbly looking, just very beautiful. The aesthetic is very similar to the Apple Park ring building itself. So it's kind of like an architectural extension of the ring building. 
but for the public. And a lot of people <laughs> stopped me because they were like, whoa, what kind of camera are you shooting with? One person even asked if it was a red, and I was like, it's not a red. Reds are cool, but, you know, this is like a quarter of the price of a typical red brain. But yeah, so I talk about the Black Magic quite a bit. That's kind of the talk of the town. I got stopped probably like four or five times. Most people that stopped me, actually, I think all the people that stopped me to ask about my camera were Apple employees, so that was pretty cool. East, who is a filmmaker, and he oh, was talking nice. about that camera all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, this was years ago, though. Yeah, they've been around, well, Blackmagic's been around forever, but the cameras have been around since 2012. Yeah, that's yeah. about when it was. <laughs> so I go around testing out the new products because I haven't tested new Apple products in probably over a year. The new Mac Mini, the iPhone XR, the iPad Pro, the Apple Watch Series 4, like, none of that stuff. The iPhone XS, none of that. I, I never touched any of it until now. I gotta say, I, I was worried that the 10R might be too big for my small hands, but it actually felt really nice. And that glass back really helped with the grip. I just didn't want to drop the money on it right now. <laughs> the 10R feels good. Like, I probably would have bought that 10R, even before Apple started trying to sell it with trade-in deals you know, like crazy, I probably would have bought it immediately. I just didn't really want to drop the money on it because the higher prices, so whatever. Yeah, the iPad Pro, man, that thing was so light. I lifted that up, it just floated. It feels really good. The The new pencil feels more pencil-like and the fact that it just magnetically attaches to the side for charging, so much smarter than the whole boner design of the old iPad Pro. <laughs> and that new Mac Mini, ooh, that's space gray, that's slick. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Apple Watch Series 4, I didn't look at that too much, but it is nice that it has that like endless screen design where the screen actually goes into the rounded corners. So then I talked to an Apple employee who noticed the camera and they were like, well, you're probably really into photography. You should test out the cameras on the other iPhones. Obviously you're into photography. Oh yes, yes of course. Have you actually tried the camera on both? I have not yet. Try the camera on both. Okay. Um, the 10R has a singular camera. Right. I mean, it's still great. It does that yeah. portrait mode photography using bokeh and you're able to adjust the bokeh. I knew they would be good. I tested out the camera. They look great. The portrait mode with the studio lighting and all that stuff looked really nice for a phone camera. Like, oh my gosh. So I took some selfies in the store and I took some other pictures. Pretty nice. Again, I would get those phones if they were a little less expensive. <laughs> but yeah, the cameras are nice. So then I started talking to this employee about the rest of the building because I said it was my first time there. I would recommend taking the staircases. A quick story about those. Sure. They actually get shipped in one piece from Italy to here and they're floating. The staircases? The staircases, yeah. So the first floor obviously goes off of the floor. Yeah. The second one and the third one beyond that is just floating. It's incredible. The stairs are floating? Yeah, well, the sec well I mean, there's nothing like below them oh. to actually hold them. I do go to the stairs later. I'll get to that in a bit. I really wanted to see this whole floating stair thing. So another fun part was the merch. There is some exclusive merch you can only buy officially from this location, some exclusive Apple merchandise. There's some other stuff at the other campus, which I'll talk about in a bit, but there's some stuff that is exclusive only to the Apple Park Visitor Center. And actually, I have a nice bag of some exclusive merch, which I will personalize for some of you guys. I'm giving some of it away as part of some Crazy Ken Patreon perks. So if you want some personalized merch that's from the Apple Park Visitor Center, check out the Patreon. You can get some of that for yourself. We'll unbox this stuff in a bit, so stick around. I'm just gonna set that awesome 10 cent bag over to the side. Yeah, they actually, when I bought the merch, they were like, do you want a bag for 10 cents? Yeah. So in traditional Apple fashion, yes, they charge extra for the bag and I bought it. <laughs> um, it's actually like a really sturdy bag. This is like the coolest bag I've ever had. It feels awesome, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. I also saw that Design by Apple book with all the product photos in it and it was huge, like in person. It was way smaller in my head. Seeing it in person, it was like, wow, that's ginormous. That would be the perfect coffee table book. And there were also some really cool Apple t-shirt designs. One of the people working there said, if you're a California local and you get the area code shirt, you're kind of an idiot. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Uh, yeah, I'm not a California local, so I guess I could have got that shirt. But but I didn't. Oh, and there was also this dog there. Hi, sweet baby. Hello. How are you? Uh, one of the employees told me that they're a regular, so yeah, they let dogs in the store. That's great. I also saw the HomePod in person for the first time. It sounded great, but it was like really tiny. Like in my head, it was kind of like, Meh. but it was actually like, <laughs> it was kind of a small little thing. It sounds awesome. I'd probably have one if I wasn't worried about the freaking thing listening to me all the time, but you know, to each his own. So now this part was great. Have you been to this location before? First time. Oh my gosh, oh my goodness. Okay, have you checked out the augmented reality? I am not, but I'm really excited to do that. That's my favorite thing ever. It weighs about 11,000 pounds, made up of aluminum and stainless steel. And just looking at it by itself, it looks so freaking beautiful, but you could also take these special 
iPads with the software on it and turn the whole thing into an augmented reality experience. And the whole model comes to life with animation and everything. And it's interactive. You could freaking lift the like roofs off the buildings and look inside. You can pinch and zoom in and look around the model. You can see how the airflow works. The building, like nine months out of that year, just uses natural air. It like breathes with these like natural design vent things on the side. It's just, you don't need to run AC or heat most of the year. It just breathes naturally, which is unbelievably cool. And there's, I think 17 megawatts of solar power all around the campus. It's all renewable energy, which is awesome. That's a really environmentally friendly building. Not only does it look cool, but you're helping mother earth. So good job, Apple, there. So now I go to the rooftop. It was actually kind of wet because it poured the night before, but it actually looked kind of cool with, you know, how shiny the water was. But anyway, you can see the ring building behind these trees. It The whole building is kind of secluded, but you can still see it enough. Uh, it still looked really freaking awesome. I think the whole campus is 175 acres and the ring building itself houses 12,000 employees and it's 2.8 million square feet. And it has these huge gargantuan glass curved panels. Like there's so much glass on this thing. And it was a beautiful view. Like I wanted to stay up there for a long time. If I didn't have a flight to catch, I would have sat up there probably for hours sipping tea or something. <laughs> and you could actually see the Steve Jobs Theater. I didn't even like pay attention to it in person. I noticed it when I was going over the stuff I filmed. I was like, oh, hey, that's the glass atrium to the Steve Jobs Theater, the underground theater. And yeah, you can see it just barely in the corner, kind of hidden behind the hills and stuff. But yeah, uh, I think I was told there were like 9,000 trees there or something. A lot of trees. They grow a lot of their own plants and stuff there. I think even fruit, they grow their own fruit there. I talked with some employees on the rooftop, which was really cool. They told me some cool things about the building and how they grow stuff. And one of them even took a photo of me on an iPhone XS, I believe it was, while I was working. So that looked really cool. But yeah, the, that's the camera with uh, portrait effect. Yeah. I do want to upgrade soon. Because like as much as I love this stuff, you know, it doesn't fit in my pocket. And, yes. the, and the, best the best camera is the, <laughs> the one, one you have with you. Right. It's a cliche, but oh so true. <laughs> Super true. <laughs> yep. So then I went to Cafe Max. They had like nuts and chocolate and teas and coffee and hot chocolate and all this stuff. And you could look at the menu on an iPad, which was pretty awesome. And if I had more time, I totally would have gotten a drink and like sipped it and probably sipped it on the rooftop. But man, as you'll see soon, I was really racing against the clock, so I didn't have time to do that. They also had a Today at Apple session going on there. So there weren't a ton of people there when I first got there, but like by the time the Today at Apple session took off, like there was probably like a hundred people there. So watching the demo with the giant video wall, man, those video walls are so cool. Awesome. So now I know I'm racing against the clock, so I have to hop in an Uber and go to Apple campus at one infinite loop. That was a really short drive, probably like five minutes or so. And there were actually other Apple buildings along the way. I learned that, you know, the infinite loop buildings, like that's just a part of the Apple campus. There's actually other offices like all around that area. And I'll tell you what, it was really, really surreal to see this historic building in person or these historic buildings in person. It felt so huge up close. Like I stared at it and it took me a while to realize that, wow, I'm actually staring at the Apple campus. Like it took a while for that information to hit my brain because it was so surreal. And one thing I liked about going here more than the Apple Park Visitor Center was I could actually get right up to the building. Like you can't get close to the ring building when you go to Apple Park, unless you're going inside of it with a badge and you're actually a registered guest. But here, even if you aren't going inside, you could still walk right up to the building. The visitor sign was there. Seeing the number one on the side was really cool. There's like two number ones on it. Depending on how you look at the sign, you can see two different number ones. I took a photo of myself next to that. That was a, that was a really cool experience. That's a really historic sign. That thing's been there forever. And I also watched some people try to get inside through the front door and I'm like, eh, you're not getting it very far. I, try, I saw like four or five Five people try and I saw them walking back within like 30 seconds. Also, there was a window with like an L shaped out of sticky notes calling me a loser. So then I go to the store. I think it used to be called the company store, but now it's just Apple One Infinite Loop. And yeah, it's definitely not as big as the Apple Park Visitor Center, but it was still pretty cool to go in there. And they had some exclusive merch that was there that actually wasn't at Apple Park. And uh, here I was actually stopped by an employee and he was asking me what I was filming for and he didn't sound as happy as like the guys at Apple Park. This guy was like, hey, I, um, I wanted to ask what you're filming for. And I was like, oh shit. I felt like he was gonna kick me out. 
because he sounded a little too serious. Uh, so I explained, like, I'm filming for a YouTube show. And I'm I'm guessing to myself, it's just the size of the rig that kind of, you know, rose a yellow flag. Because it's not a tiny little iPhone. It's like a bigger camera. So it looks more professional. And that's probably what caught his attention. And, uh, yeah, he, he let me film. He let me keep going. But, yeah, I was a little worried he was going to kick me out. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Oh yeah, and while I was there, I did see more iPhone XR promo pushes. They're really trying to sell that phone. They even had it, like, etched into the glass, or whatever etching method that is, whatever. Like, on the glass of the store. Even at Apple Park, they had the offer for the trade-in program, like, on the glass. I'm no expert, but if you maybe reduce the profit margin a little bit, you might sell more. Uh, but hey. So that was so much fun. It, again, it was hard to leave. I just wanted to sit there, but... I had another site to go to, the old garage where Steve Jobs would make cold calls and Steve Wozniak would help test products with, uh, I think they had some other employees working with them at the time, I don't remember. And uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. The neighborhood was dead quiet. That's it right there, the Apple garage. I don't know who currently owns this place, but yep, there's been some issues before apparently. I mean, you'd expect that. I don't see where the cameras are though. They're either not there and the sign is a placebo effect sort of thing, or they're really well hidden. It was so peaceful and warm. Like I could just stand there forever looking at that house, that historic house. While I was there, there were probably like a dozen other tourists that showed up to take pictures. Keep in mind, I was there for maybe 10 minutes and there was probably like 10 or 12 other people that swung by. So that house must get a lot of attention. And I actually helped a group take a group photo. So that was really fun. So then there's another site. The Flint Center. Again, another amazing, surreal experience. It was super quiet because it was at this college. And I I guess they were out for break, maybe, or something. But yeah, there was no one there. It was deserted. It was so quiet. Again, very peaceful. I felt like I could take my time there. And the weather was nice. It was warm. The first Macintosh was demoed to shareholders here. The iMac was unveiled there. The Apple Watch was unveiled there. Apple biopics were filmed there. It's a historic center for the computer industry, especially with Apple. So, of course, I had to stand in front of it like an idiot and take a picture with my Canon DSLR on a timer. Click, run in front of it, <laughs> stand still. So then, the race back home. Okay, so my flight leaves in like about two hours. I'm 70 miles from the airport I need to get to and I have no car. So I just think, oh, I'll just Uber it like I did before. Okay, so now I guess near the end of the day, no one wanted to do a 70 mile trip. I, I knew this going into this, but when you get an Uber, the driver doesn't know where you're going until you get in the car, then it says the destination on their screen. And I, I get this one guy and he's like, ooh, 70 miles, yeah, can you cancel? <laughs> I'm like, sure. So I cancel. I get charged, whatever. Uh, I get out of the car and I'm just standing on this deserted campus like, okay, um, well, let's try another guy. I get another guy. I text him ahead of time warning him, hey, it's going to be a long trip. And, and he turns me down as well. So I summon my backup plan. I plan for this in advance. I thought, well, if no one can do the long trip, I'll just find someone who's willing to take me halfway and then someone to take me the rest of the way. No big deal. I just pick a random spot on a map, it lands in Santa Cruz. The last Uber driver that I had to cancel on is the one that picks me up and I'm like, oh shit, I'm gonna have to explain this to him now. And I explain the idea to him and he's actually like, wow, I don't know what you did, but that's really smart. <laughs> I felt good about myself, I guess. I was like, thank you. He said everybody wins because now I get halfway to my destination and he gets paid. And I was like, yep, that's the idea. And I gave him a generous tip too. So then I have to get Another Uber driver, of course, to take me the rest of the way. Uh, I needed to charge my phone just to have some extra juice in there. And the cool thing about the battery I use on my Black Magic camera is it has a USB port on it. So whatever's clever, right? Charge your phone off your camera. So then that second Uber driver gets me to my hotel. I get my checked bags from the front desk, Uber to the airport, went through TSA and got to my gate about 15 minutes before they started boarding. Holy crap. It was a close call but I did it and it was a phenomenal experience. So now let's unbox the merchandise. Dun da da da, the 10 cent Apple bag. So we have one box, two box, kind of falling over and a third box. So regrettably, 
They got a little bit damaged during the flight home. I kind of figured that would happen. The boxes are pretty cool because, again, they're exclusive. They're only for the merchandise at these particular locations. Let's see. This is the one I got at Apple Park. You can see on the label there, Apple Park t-shirt. And then this one is Macintosh t-shirt. I got this one at the One Infinite Loop store. And then the personalized items that I want to give away to some of you guys through Patreon. There's these really cool vintage, some, some new products, but mostly vintage Apple products on these postcards. So I thought it'd be cool if I signed them and personalized them for you guys through Patreon. So if you want to get some of these, uh, yeah, you can get them on Patreon. We'll take a look at those in a bit. Let's start with the t-shirt. This one's cool. All right. Yeah, it got a little broke. Let me, uh, got to fix that a little bit. Here we go. Plastic condom unit to keep it clean. There's that awesome art. Sweet. Look at that. The original Macintosh schematic there. You got the Apple logo on there. The three and a half inch floppy disk drive. The ray tube. Just everything. It looks awesome. Little Apple tag. Oh, Apple logo there too. Made in China. Look at that. That's pretty sweet. I dig it. I dig the whole like magenta cyan look too. Very cool. Oh, that smells amazingly horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'll definitely wash this, of course, but yeah, that, uh, just a lazy folding job, put that over there for now, <laughs> yeah, it's, it smells inkish, very inkish, okay, um, now, as you know, I am a huge fan of black, so, of course, all of my shirts are black, all the leaves are black, leaves are black, ring, yeah, this one looks, it smells, it smells the same, it's probably the ink, and one, two, three, boom, Apple Park, the ring building in a beautiful rainbow color, like the spinning wheel of death. <laughs> oh, it's pretty slick. I love the rainbow colors on the black. That is really cool. Apple Park. All right. Sweet. Yeah, I'll probably wear those in a future episode. So now we have these little postcards. Let's have a look at these. That box just feels nice. <laughs> Call me weird, but it feels nice. You can flip it open. Cool. And you just take them out, I guess. Oh, nice. Rounded corners, of course. So you can write on the back there. I can put a personalized message there for you. It even has the product name and year there. That's cool. And then there's the photo. So MacBook 2015 right there. And there's the picture. So you got that one. So you got MacBook Pro or MacBook. We got an, the original iPod, it looks like. Ooh, the Pro Mouse. Uh, I think this was like the 2000 or 2001 iMac because it's not the frosted look. It's the more clear look. That is the iPhone 4, beautiful. The original iPad, Apple Watch. Ah, uh, the good old cheese grater, Power Mac G5. <laughs> what are these, like tarot cards? And we got another Apple Watch with the Melanase loop, very pretty. The iPhone headphones and the cinema display, 22 inch. Very cool design. So yeah, uh, just hit me up on Patreon if you want some of these. I have perks that will offer these to you and I'll personalize them for you. I'll, I'll write whatever you want on them. That's not too profane, I suppose, and I'll sign them for you even. And I just realized I missed a postcard here, so hang on. I'll deal with that later. Yeah, this one is the MacBook from 2015 as well, but you can see it open with the batteries and stuff like that. Very nice. Okay, get back in your envelope now. So that was the trip to Apple Park. If you've been to any of these sites, I want to know your stories and share your experiences with me. Heck, even share your photos in front of the signs. I love seeing those. But yeah, it was a lot of fun, and I'd love to go back and do some other episodes in Silicon Valley. What do you think? Thanks for taking along with me, guys. Catch the crazy and pass it on. Pass it on.